is the Motorola R7, Motorola's latest hand portable radio. And what an absolute beauty it is, look at that. Amazing, I love Motorola stuff. The quality of it is just absolutely amazing. It's pretty compact as well for like a kind of commercial radio. Um, it's got some interesting features, this, um, mainly on the sound kind of audio side. Um, obviously this is a DMR radio. It's a DMR and FM radio, so sort of, you know, multi-mode, if you like. Single band, as most of this PMR stuff is, but this has got some really interesting features. So the first one is this has got noise cancelling. So it's actually got two microphones. It's got a microphone at the back, which senses ambient noise, and it's got a microphone at the front, obviously, for your voice. So the idea with this is it can actually sense ambient noise and cancel that out and give you a better experience. Because it's a pretty well-known fact that DMR, the way it compresses your audio, it can sound pretty terrible if there's a lot of extra sounds kind of, you know, going into the microphone. So Motorola have actually done quite a lot here to enhance the sound and their whole marketing spiel on this is actually about being heard. And when they say that, they're actually talking about making it easier to recognize who's talking on the radio because again, DMR can make everyone sound the same, a little bit robotic. It's not as nice as FM in my opinion, but it is a useful modern mode with some great modern features like encryption, text messaging, calls to different groups, that sort of stuff. It's much, much more advanced than FM. So let's take a closer look then. So the first thing you notice is obviously this screen. Look at that, it's it's an amazing screen. It's transflective as well, so it looks like it's catching the light there. So, you know, there's no backlight on at all, and you can still read it, which would be great in sunlight. Um, which is obviously a lot better than kind of, you know, when, when screens have to light up because they're never bright enough. Um, if you hit a button, then it obviously flips to sort of normal mode. So we've got our channel and our zone on the top. We've also got a se separate section below for text messages, so you immediately see... Um, you know, a text message there, and then you can obviously kind of move about and with these arrow keys. Um, there's no sort of central OK button, which is a bit weird to get used to at first, but you soon do. And then you can see this other text messages that have been brought in from, um, you know, my messing around. So, you know, full keypad radio. Um, it is front panel programmable to an extent that's not fully programmable at the moment. There might be a firmware update for this. Um, I will say at the moment, um, I bought this with my own money, so this is not, you know, a, a sponsored review at all. Um, I like following the process of, you know, the digital radios and where, where it's all going, because um, it's been quite a long while since Motorola brought out something um as interesting in, in as this in my opinion anyway so top of the screen very very smartphone like you know it's got this particular model has got wi-fi bluetooth gps it's the full fully loaded version so there's actually two versions of this radio um one doesn't have wi-fi and gps i'm not sure if they both have bluetooth i'll have to check that um but yeah basically you get a connected version effectively and a non-connected version so this won't do you know network radio stuff um, that's not what it's for. Um, I'm not generally interested in that sort of stuff, really. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm more um, old school radio. So yeah, guys, this is pure RF. Now, the Wi-Fi can be used for like programming. You can program over the air, do software updates. Actually, this radio, when you first get this radio out of the box, it needs to be activated um, which is a bit of a change from um, you know what used to happen. You used to just turn it on, plug it into a CPS, and you could do it that way. But you actually need to set up a SSID on your router, and the radio will connect. And basically, I think it's telling it what version of this radio it is, whether it's the fully loaded one or not, which is crazy because obviously all radios have got the same hardware inside, and um, you're just paying more just for the privilege of using it, which I don't particularly agree with. But Anyway, it is what it is. Now, you might be wondering where the speaker is. It's actually behind here. It sounds absolutely amazing on FM mode um, and DMR as well. Um, as I say, I prefer the FM mode because it's just, you know, it just sounds so much more sort of wholesome. But, you know, we're in the modern age as well. So digital is obviously really useful, especially for the encryption side of things, for preventing people from listening to you. And you can do some pretty good encryption on DMR as well um, these days to make sure you're not going to get listened to. So this is probably a good point to say... I don't actually do a lot of DMR stuff in ham radio, um, mainly because I'm not really interested in, in talking to people where it's using an internet connection. I'd rather practice the skills of kind of communicating without that. So that's why I don't do much DMR on there. You, you might find me on DMR on the Simplex channels, um, you know, testing stuff out. But 
yeah, I, I usually use DMR stuff with my business license and for communicating with friends and, and that sort of thing. So if you want to know more about that, you can get a license from Ofcom, which allows you to use radios like this back to back, just handhelds. If you want to use repeaters and other things, then it gets more complicated. But you can get a simple um, license, which allows you to um, use these radios legally. And it's only about 70 quid for five years, so there's no excuse. So you're probably going to want to see this radio in use. So I'm going to stop waffling and I'll show you a little test me and Charles did over about a kilometre range away. So, yeah, not miles, but you'll see, you know, what I mean. It does actually sound quite good, I think. Let's give Charles a shout. Charles, you on here? Yes, Rog, on here. Then you Always sounds funny five and nine on a on a digital radio, but yeah, you're absolutely um, absolutely perfect over here. Um, I mean, this is a pretty good line of sight to where you are, isn't it? I don't know, distance wise, probably it's probably a kilometer or so, isn't it? Yeah, probably around a kilometer, kilometer and a half. You know, we've got quite a bit in, between. We've got the railway in between, haven't we? Yeah, we have. So what? Um, I just nearly walked into a bin. So what, um, you got anything to say to uh, <laughs> to the channel? Just make sure you join the uh, Discord, link will be in the description. <laughs> Love it. Stick the link in the description. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, so the um, this sounds really good on digital. Um, Charles is actually using a, um, basically like a SL4000, one of my little SL4000s. They are tiny radios. They've got literally hardly any aerial, um, hardly any antenna on at all. And um, obviously, we're on my license frequency, so um, yeah, it's all good. This this motor road of audio sounds amazing, though. I've still got a good signal from you. I think it's about three bars, so we're like there's a lot, but quite a lot between us now. Um, give us a shout so I can see what it says. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it's like one or two bars. Can you hear me all right, though? Yeah, I've got you five. I've got you five bars. Perfect. So that was pretty good, I thought. Actually, that was with no audio enhancement on at all because I literally just got the radio, just programmed it, um, and just got going straight away. Um, so no audio enhancement. So we're going to do that next. Um, but yeah, I think you'll agree. It sounds pretty good. DMR is always going to sound a bit robotic. That's the nature of it. Um, that's the trade-off you're going to get for you know not using FM and having it going and, and having the white noise there. We did actually flick to FM, but I didn't catch it on camera. Um, I'm unfortunately and you know there was a lot of background noise at that range so you know that's a good thing i like giving these radios to people that don't use radios much because actually you know the, the white noise can be a bit overwhelming sometimes especially if you're moving all that it's not what people are used to these days so giving these radios to people that don't kind of use radios regularly this is more like a smartphone um kind of experience actually some of the smartphone some of the phone conversations that i've had with people lately sound absolutely terrible on 4g so you know it, it can be better than that so all these radios are now using cps2 the new motorola programming software um which is quite different to i mean if you're used to using the old cps's then you might have a little bit of kind of getting used to this because it is things are slightly different but, you know, everything's there that's supposed to be and obviously a lot more. So, you know, this is the programming software, lots of stuff you can do here. Um, and in particular, what I wanted to show you was um, these audio profiles. So you've got, see at the moment I've got it all disabled. So you've got intelligent audio response. Now this is really interesting. Um, so what this does is this optimizes the, the volume of the radio. So this radio has a ridiculously loud speaker, like it's, it's designed to be used in really loud environments. So it goes super loud. Don't put it next to your head because it is, <laughs> or next to your ear, um, because it is very, very, very loud. So this, this actually kind of does a self adjustment of the volume. So you can set the volume of your radio, the maximum you want it to be. And then with this particular setting here, it will actually adjust based on the ambient noise that it's getting from its microphones it will adjust the output so you can you know have that set really cool you've also got this language set in here which is interesting what that's for is the audio encoding so it will actually optimize um, to your language type which is quite a game changer if that's working I don't know but yeah interesting um, and then you've got different profiles for 
um you know the how you want it to sound basically um, different you know mid boost treble boost so these are going to take a little bit of playing around with to see what they sound like um audio suppressor so audio suppressor is good if you're in an environment where there's other radios and you might come into contact with other people where they're talking next to you on the radio it eliminates feedback check this out one two three one two so that's really neat. So you've actually got some pretty good features for customising the sound on DMR, which is which is always good because, you know, we know it doesn't sound great a lot of the time. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to enable all of the sound cancelling features of this radio and I'm going to go out into the field, go into the town where it's really noisy um, and I'm going to do some audio comparison tests between my dear old SL4000, which I love this little radio because it's just so small. See, it nearly slips out of my hand. And um, yeah, yeah, we're going to compare the audio between this and the Motorola R7 with all its bells and whistles turned on. And I'm going to record the results on my little Anytone here, the 878 UV2 Plus 2, <laughs> whatever it is. But yeah, basically, this is a great radio for ham stuff. It's been around for quite a while. There's loads of stuff online about this already. But this is dual band. It does all of the stuff you could possibly want to um, out of ham radio stuff. But obviously, it's not, you know, a PMR professional end thing i mean it, it's good it's still good though right so i'm out guys this is a fairly noisy location like there's a lot of road noise this side probably the noisiest location i could find anyway i'm going to test the radios out and see how they work right so this is the sl4000 with no audio cancelling or enhancement this is the sl4000 no audio enhancement and this is the motorola r7 with noise cancellation. This is the Motorola R7. Right, I'm back now. It started to chuck it down as usual. So I've got my, so I've got my Anytone here. I'm gonna go into the recorded files and um, start by playing back the, the first one. So this is the SL4000. Right, so this is the SL4000. No audio cancelling or enhancement. This is the SL4000. No audio enhancement. I mean, it don't sound bad to me at all. So let's go to the R7. And this is the Motorola R7 with noise cancellation. Lost it this a bit then. Motorola R7. You can hear the wind noise coming in. But there was a, the noise, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, the noise level was, was a little bit less. We need to try this with some really loud noises. So I've got some crowd noise playing <laughs> from my speaker up there. Let's, let's test it out. Right, let's see what happens then. So I've got the, obviously the radio. Um, my record list. So the, the, let's play the SL4000 first. I mean, that's just... That doesn't sound good, does it? Right, now let's try the R7. I mean, that did sound better. It's definitely better. Let's just go back again. You're getting, you're getting everything. You couldn't make out what he said. What, I, what he said. What I said at the end about the noisy environment. Um, and then, so let's play. It's definitely better. It's definitely better. I mean, that was pretty loud as well. So, yeah. Interesting, eh? Interesting. Not as kind of like black and white as you think, but there's definitely um, there's definitely a difference there. So I wanted to test if this kind of noise reduction feature works on FM as well. It does. Listen to this. I've recorded 
two different radios. I've recorded obviously the, the R7 and um, my Retivis as well, which is just the basic, you know, just a basic radio. Um, and listen to this. So this is the Retivis first. And then the Motorola. Do you hear what it did then? It basically just like zeroed in. It sounded like it zeroed in on my voice. Listen. You hear that noise just decrease. Now listen to the rest of this. And the rest of this ain't, is, you know, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. But you can definitely hear that, you know, the way it's, it's just too much going on and it could be difficult to understand. So there you go, interesting. Right guys, so the last test I'm gonna do before I go is I'm gonna give you an FM test so you can hear the FM audio. I think it sounds absolutely amazing. It's one for the FM diehards. Yeah, this radio for me will be in FM mode a lot of the time. Um, it, it just sounds so good. So I'm just gonna do a test with one of my other radios and um, go outside the room and you can see what it sounds like. This is a test. This is a test for FM audio quality on the Motorola R7. This is one for all the FM diehards. You're gonna love this one, I think. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Catch you next time.